excel. Chances are that word alone stirs visions of lengthy spreadsheets and budgets with complicated formulas and charts. But if you think Excel is only good for making you cross-eyed while looking at a bunch of numbers in financial reports, think again. There are a ton of uses for Excel in business and at home. You know, a passion of mine is cycling. I ride almost year round. I have a few different bikes and I have to keep them all maintained. Well, what does that have to do with Excel? Let me show you a very simple log I keep of my bicycle maintenance and the different things I can do based on this simple data tracking. Here is the log that I keep for my bicycle maintenance in Excel. Now I actually print this out and I keep it out in my garage and so I can just handwrite it in and then I update Excel as needed. So let's take a look at this. It's very simple. I the date of the either maintenance or if I had to make a purchase, what bike it was. I do have more than one bike and I have a for instance I have a mountain bike single speed then I have a mountain bike I have a gravel bike and I have a cross bike that's a single speed and I keep the names consistent so when I do use these names in a formula they'll come up correct and then I'm just keeping a log of what the maintenance was or what the purchase was and if there was a cost involved and then who performed the maintenance? So if it's a purchase, obviously no one performed the maintenance. Sometimes I do the maintenance myself. I'm not a very good bike mechanic, so there are times I have to take it to the bike shop. So what can you do just by keeping this very simple maintenance log or any type of log, whether you're keeping a personal budget, you wanna take inventory of your books that you have, anything like that, anything you can think of to actually keep a list within Excel because there's some very basic things you can do with this. First off, if you're new to Excel, it's going to give you practice with inputting data into Excel and just simply navigating around. I can use date formats. I get practice inputting data. I can use different number formats. So here I'm using the currency style. I could use the accounting style. I could simply use a comma style. So these are all just some basic things you will learn simply by using Excel. But let's take this a little bit further. So I've got some data going on here. I can sort. So say I just want to, I want to group these all together. I don't necessarily, it's entered by date. But I want to group these together or sort these. So I'm going to come over here on my home tab in my editing group. And I can sort from lowest to highest or highest to lowest or I can go to my custom sort and let's say I want to sort by the bike and then if I wanted to subsort I could add a level and then have a secondary sort but I'll just keep it at this one and then it's telling me I have to delete that level okay now you can see now it's sorted I can also apply a filter if I only want to look let's say only mountain bike maintenance that I've done or purchases. Now everything else is hidden. It doesn't go away. So see how my rows go from 1 to 8, then here 15 to 19. So everything that I don't want to see that's filtered out is simply hidden. Those rows are hidden. So the information is still there. And you can see each of my column headings have this little drop down arrow. So I could sort, or I'm sorry, filter by each one of these. And since this filter is applied in the bike column, you can there's a little funnel he here now instead of the drop down arrow. To turn that off, I'm just going to go back to sort and filter and just turn off filter. So it's an on off sort of thing. So those are a couple of things that you can do. You can also apply borders. So I could apply borders around the entire thing. Again, home for borders, click the drop down arrow. And I usually just do all borders unless I'm trying to do something fancy because you can just do bottom border, top border. You can play around 
with all these different border styles. Like I mentioned earlier, you can play with the number styles, apply different number styles. I could even do a total for my ongoing maintenance. Then I can just simply do a sum function. And my auto sum is actually right here. But in this case, I usually, if it's an ongoing list, I don't like to put the total at the bottom because then I have to keep moving it, inserting rows. And so if I just put it right up here at the top, equal sum, I'm just going to double click on sum, automatically opens my parentheses. Now I could select a range here. And I'll show you it's here. So now it says D2 through D51. So it's going to stop at whatever row that I specified. However, because this is an ongoing list, something you can do is just simply click in the column heading and it'll show D through D. Now it doesn't matter how long your list gets. You never have to go in and change this formula. And then I'm just going to hit enter. That'll close the parentheses and that'll give me an ongoing total. So that's another thing. So again, the very basic things that you can do simply by keeping a list in Excel, the ways that you can practice is you can practice with sort, filter, using your borders, using different number styles, and using a sum function. What are some of the more advanced things that you can do just from this simple list that I'm keeping? Well, let's look here at my maintenance totals. Oh, and that's another thing you can do. My maintenance log, you can name your worksheet. So if I create a new worksheet, it's just called Sheet 1, Sheet 2, Sheet 3. But you can give it a name. It helps keep you a little bit more organized, especially if you're going to have multiple worksheets. But let's look at my maintenance totals. So here's some things I can do once I get a little bit more advanced in Excel. I have the four bikes that I have listed here. And again, you want to remain consistent within your naming. If I call this mountain bike MTBSS, but then another entry I put MTB and spell out single speed, then my formulas are not going to return accurate numbers. So let's look at my total cost. I'm using a sum if. So sum if the criteria meets mountain bike single speed. Sum if it needs cross single speed. I can do the same thing for how many times was maintenance performed using a count if. And then I can do a grand total from that here. I can also do charts. So if I just for visual representation, so even though I have the numbers right here, Charts bridge that gap between our spreadsheet data and the real world. It's a lot easier to look at a picture that represents something than it is just to look at a bunch of numbers. So I can create a chart. If I click on this, I can see that this is bike and total cost. If I click on this chart here, I can see that this was my bike and how many times the maintenance was performed. So again, some more advanced features that you can work on is sum if, count if, and charts. Now the more you learn about Excel, the more you will learn how to analyze your data and to have fun with it. So I hope I encouraged you to use Excel more and I hope I gave you some ideas. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, take a look through the videos, and if you would like a particular Excel feature covered, let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking to create videos that my audience needs. Thanks for watching.